I run a global community of innovators. When our community grew to over 5,000, I felt we needed a role model. It had to be a woman. She had to be courageous, forward-thinking, and someone who is not afraid to challenge preconceptions. This is Victoria Modesta. She's a futurist, an artist, an innovator, a fellow of MIT. She closed the Paralympics in London. She opened the Paralympics in Rio. You could think of her as a bionic version of Lady Gaga. Victoria suffered as a child with multiple leg operations. As a teenager, she took the brave decision to have her leg amputated. But for her, the question has never been, how can I be normal? Instead, our challenge was, how do we amplify her talents and allow her to be truly extraordinary and someone we can all aspire to? She could have as many bodily extensions as she wished. So a group of our innovators fitted her with sensors and a carbon fiber dress. And a phenomenal designer, Anouk Wipprecht, created a prosthetic leg that could generate smoke for the stage. And why not? Like a bionic Marilyn Monroe, the smoke lifted her dress. And then our neurofeedback team from MuArts fitted her with neurofeedback sensors which allowed her to control the lights on her dress by expressing herself directly from her brain. It took a few days for Victoria to train in our labs, but in the end, she was able to do it seamlessly. So we thought, we'll take this further. From Berlin to Helsinki, with 30 artists and scientists, and an amazing blind singer, and vocal coach from the Sibelius Institute, someone with extraordinary vocal range and ability, Rika Hannanen. And during the week of our labs, the neurofeedback team adapted a system from clinical trials, which allows for people with anxiety to monitor their brain activity, and when their brain activity changes, they can start to train to control it except this time, they turned it into a musical instrument. And the people in the lab could start to train to play music with their brain. It took around two hours for a person to be able to go up and down the musical scale. Then Rika, the blind singer, put the neurofeedback sensor on, and she was able to play instantly. And then the penny dropped. Someone who in the mechanical era was considered less able-bodied was now, in the era of brain-computer interfaces, much more talented than the rest of us. So, how do we discover these new human talents? Well, first, we don't think of anyone as normal. <laughs> we think everybody can be extraordinary. But how do we build systems that allow us to be extraordinary? Well, first, we need to change our mental models, because the technologies we build are based on our mental models. As engineers, designers or scholars, we will project our image of the world onto our final result. If you have a belief system that says there's a person at the top and a hierarchy below, you will build technologies as tree structures, with an entity at the top and a series of relationships below. And this will sometimes fail, because relationships aren't so simple. And if you model networks on our nervous system, you will construct it as a series of nodes and synapses. And this will sometimes lead to long and convoluted pathways, instead of shortcuts. And if, like some of us, you have been brought up on Western logic, you will use if this, then that. Except if you have ever filled a form, 
that fails to capture your real life situation because it gives you limited options, you will have felt the presence of a systemic bias that works against you. The on and off of a form radio button is based on the law of the excluded middle. There is nothing between zero and one. Or is there? Hmm. Well, if we look at that space between zero and one, it's quite a big space. You could divide it up as many times as you like. It's an interesting space. It's neither nothing nor the whole. And it has infinite possibilities. In fact, there is an infinity between zero and one. And if you look at these transitions between one face and another, well, maybe it's neither one nor the other. And you may find some of those instances more meaningful than others. In fact, there is a range of possibilities between one and another, and you will react to some of them, and the person next to you may react to others. This is interesting and important when we start to program systems. We're talking fuzzy. Some of you may know fuzzy logic, but we're also talking fuzzy philosophically, because we are not distinct units, and it doesn't help us to think binary anymore. In Western thinking, you will have been brought up to think of yourself as the one, the whole, the individual, aspiring to the Platonian archetype. But it may be more useful to draw a circle around you and reimagine you as a fuzzy entity, like an orographic cloud that hangs on top of the mountain. It looks like an entity, but it is in fact a system in constant motion. It's hot air that rises up, loops, cools, and goes back down. By drawing a circle around you, we create a cloud of information, and you become a phenomenon. In the world of security and privacy, if we want to protect you, the one in the center, we will draw a radius around you and obscure you so we can still get meaningful data, but hide you, the subject of that data. And there's an art in drawing that radius, because if you draw it too close, you're still revealing sensitive information. If you draw it too wide, it becomes too generic and the data becomes meaningless. We call it fuzzification. We fuzzify the subject. But what's really interesting is that there is a greater value for the receiver of fuzzy information. The receiver is perhaps seeing something more meaningful to them. And why is that? Because we've placed you into a greater context, and that context is ever-changing, and it can be subject to various environmental parameters, like your cloud. So if we are clever with our radius, we convey more meaningful information, and the receiver has more to respond to. So we're actually adding value. We create a new entity, a new whole, and then we can start to push at the boundaries of what's possible. We stay with the meaning centered on the subject, but we explore to extend its possibilities. For example, by taking a creative leap with new technologies, we allow Rika to explore her capabilities and we discover levels of virtuosity we never knew existed. By pushing at her boundaries, we have created a new whole. This is called abductive reasoning. Now, the reason why abductive reasoning is really important is because it is responsible for some of the greatest scientific discoveries. When Nikola Tesla was exploring his ideas, if he had been merely deducing from the information available to him and Edison and everyone else, they would have all come up with the same conclusions. And sometimes they did. But in order to go further, Nikola Tesla had to take a creative leap. He had to look at his evidence and think of the most plausible explanation. And the most plausible explanation required a little imagination to take a leap and create a hypothesis. This is where the greatness of science happens. 
by taking a creative leap. And the systems we are building now with artificial intelligence will only be great when we manage to reproduce abductive reasoning. The next stage of AI is abductive. So what's really great about pushing at the edges of this radius? Every time you add meaning, you create a new hole, and you can duplicate this onwards towards infinity. You can create new narratives at infinitum. You can shoot for the moon. This is about the courage to take moonshots. Because you cannot be creative and take a creative leap unless you believe in infinity as something that is real, not a virtual notion, real. Because every time you take a leap, you take a step forward. And if you didn't believe there were infinite possibilities, you wouldn't be able to do it. It's called creative repetition, or as Alain Badiou, the French philosopher, calls it, encore. How appropriate. This is Chico. He's a neuroscientist and he lives in Portugal. But by connecting him here to a data system, we are capturing his cloud in a fleeting moment of a phenomenon that is constantly in motion. But what is even more interesting is when he starts to interact with the system, contributes to it, and discovers new capabilities. And it's this, the human system, we want to interact with. The human system between birth and death, between zero and one, is truly special. And you will have all been told a thousand times before that you are all unique, but you will not know exactly how and in what ways you are special until what happened to Rika happens to you. And we can only do that if we go beyond binary, into the fuzzy spaces, and we build technologies based on new mental models that allow us to push at the boundaries of who we are and discover new capabilities and virtuosities. Thank you. Thank you.